for this morning meditation tongue of the bride manavati in navu manavati in navu when this banner was given in the group whatsapp group one of our believers asked a question what about manavi in navu He is saying about Manavati in Navu, what about Manavi in Navu? Okay, today we will consider Manavati in Navu. God willing, yet another day we will consider Manavi in Navu. Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 11. For the last few weeks we are meditating on the, on tongue. We are meditating on tongue. Songs of Solomon chapter 4 verse 11 Thy lips O spouse drop as the honey comb honey and milk are under thy tongue and the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon honey and milk are under thy tongue honey and milk in other words the bride the bride of our lord and savior jesus christ the church the believers under their tongue honey and milk are there in other words when they speak they speak out words which are honey and milk so what we understand by honey and milk we can say a number of things about honey and milk to save time i tell you five important things i tell you about five important things which are common for both honey and milk number 1 honey and milk for strength both give strength honey and milk both give strength number 2 honey and milk both are medicinal medicinal nutritious tonic both have got healing properties both have got healing properties number 3 both give strength both have got healing properties medicinal very interestingly both are tasty both are tasty and number 4 honey and milk to a very great extent suitable for all honey and milk for the babes for the growing up children for the adults for the newly married for the feeding mother 
even in their old age. So some people, a diabetic, they are scared of honey. According to Indian medicine, honey taken properly is very good for diabetes. So honey and milk are good for all people. You cannot say about any other dish. You can't say lime is good for everybody. You can't say apple is good for everybody. You can't say mutton is good for everybody. You can't give biryani to the children. You can't give biryani to the old people. Biryani is a military food. Only military people should eat biryani. But honey and milk, it's good for all people. Number two, very interestingly. Apple is not a processed food. Brinjal is not a processed food. Lime is not a processed food. And orange is not a processed food. Both honey and milk are processed food. What do I mean by this? I will let you know later. Honey and milk are the processed food. So there are many other things which are common for honey and milk, but I just take only these five things to save time. Number one, honey and milk, they give strength. So the words of the bride give strength to the weak people. So in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, Paul says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So it's a word. There is word in the power. There is, there is power in the word. There is Shakti in the word. There is Shakti in the word. Shakti. There is Shakti in the word. A word can make, a word can mar. A word can kill, a word can revive. A word can break, a word can build. You tell someone, you can do it. Christ strengthens you. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So your word brings strength to somebody. Speak words which can build them up. Don't speak words which can break them up. Which, whatever the worst situation may be, if you are the bride of Christ, you will speak out the words which can build them. So the prophets, through prophets, the Holy Spirit, always spoke the words which can build. Though there are words for correction, the ultimate purpose is not to break, but to build. At times to break and build. But not just to destroy. Even that breaking is for building. So in Isaiah, I just read a couple of verses. The whole Bible is filled with these type of verses. Isaiah 41.10 The Lord says, don't be afraid, fear not. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Be not dismayed, don't be confused. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The prophet says, through a prophet the Lord says, now if you are a child of God, what type of word should come out of your mouth? Don't be afraid. For God is with you. Don't be dismayed, confused. For God is the Lord is your God. He is your God. God who has created heaven and the earth is your God. He will strengthen you. He will help you. He will uphold you with his righteous right hand. You tell them, strength will come to the person who 
listens to you. You may correct him. You may shout at him, reprimand him. But that is also to build him up. Fear not. The Lord is with you. Deuteronomy 31.6 Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Moses is telling young Joshua, Tell your son, tell your daughter, tell your wife, tell your husband, tell a young person who is afraid to take a new venture, who is afraid to take up a leadership, who is scared to go forward, tell him, be strong and courageous. Be strong. Be bold. Do not fear or be dread of them. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about the challenge. Don't worry about the new venture. Don't worry, son. Don't worry, daughter. Don't worry, ma. Don't be afraid of that new situation. Be strong, be courageous, because it is the Lord your God. He goes with you in this new situation. It is your God who goes with you. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Don't be afraid. You speak the words which can bring strength. I can go on and on and on. The whole Bible is filled with these words. When there are so many positive words, why should we think about negative words in our life? There are so many words which can build. I don't say we should not reprimand. We should correct what is wrong. But that is also to build them up. I'll just show you one more verse. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. Habakkuk 3 19. God, it is my own confession. God, the Lord is my strength. God, Yahweh, is my strength. He that is, I am what I am. The unchanging God, yesterday, today, forever, He is the same. This God is my God. He is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's feet, hind's feet. He makes me tread on my high places. I will, he will not forsake me. He will not leave me. So, we know Psalm 23 verse 4. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Yes, it is true. I am going through some difficult situations. Darkness is around me. Death is hanging on my head. I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death. De death. The shadow of death is on me. But I will fear no evil. Lord, because you are with me, your rod and your staff will comfort me, will strengthen me. Now speak of the same words with somebody who is walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Son, don't be afraid. Sister, don't be afraid. My brother, don't be afraid. Yes, you are walking through difficult situations. Is death our life? The shadow of death is on you. Yes, you are walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but don't be afraid. God is with you. His rod, His staff will strengthen you, will comfort you, will make you strong. Why should you be afraid? So my dear brother, my dear sister, speak of the words which can give strength to the people. That could make people strong. So that is milk and honey will do. To the sick people, milk and honey, 
to the sportsman milk and honey to the warrior milk and honey to the aged people milk and honey will give strength so under the tongue of the bride milk and honey speak out the words which can give life which can give strength to somebody don't speak out the words which can totally destroy them i remember when humor pastor samson ramaya used to say there was a sick person somebody went to visit him visit the sick person maybe somebody like us he went to visit the sick person he went and asked uh, how are you uh, not well what is wrong with you is gone for prayer now the inquiry before prayer na pannade irumal rendu nalagi ah rendu nala rendu nala irumaringala aama javam pannala edha doctor paathingala javam pannala edha doctor paathingala yes yes we saw that doctor enna sonnar onnu illa nu sonnar அதெல்லாம் நம்பாதீங்க எது டாக்டர் சொன்னதெல்லாம் நம்பாதீங்க ஜோம் பண்ணுவோம் என் பக்கத்தில் ஒருத்தர் அப்படி தாங்க சாதாரண இருமல் மூணு நாள் இருமினாருங்க மூணாவது நாள் போயிட்டாரு நீங்கள் பயப்படாதீங்க எதுக்கு இன்னொரு டாக்டரை பாருங்கன்னா ஜோம் பண்ணுறேன் நம்ம அப்படி சாதாரண இருமல்னு இருந்துடக்கூடாது பாவம் அந்த மனுஷன் உங்களை விட நல்லா ஸ்ட்ராங்காக இருப்பாருங்க பொட்டுன்னு போயிட்டாருங்க ஆனால் ஜோம் பண்ண சரியாயிரும் பயப்பட வேணாம் இன்னும் அந்த டாக்டர் சொன்னார்னு சும்மா இருந்துடுறாங்க இவர் ஜோம் பண்ண ஆரம்பிக்கல அவர் போயிடுவார் இவர் ஜோம் பண்ண ஆரம்பிக்கிறதுக்குள்ள அவர் போய் சேர்ந்துடுவார் ஸோ வாட் ஆஃப் வேர்ட்ஸ் வி ஸ்பீக் டூ அவர் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஸ்ட்ரென்த் பீப்புள் டூ அவர் வேர்ட்ஸ் வீக் வீக் அண்ட் பீப்புள் think about a minute under the tongue of a bride there is milk and honey many people have said we go to pastor with a big problem pastor always alone illa sariya padu he'll be very angry we are gone with such a great problem and pastor says one illa sariya padu after a few days they would come and say pastor illa sariya padu சரியாக போயிடுங்க சரியாக போயிடு என்ன சரியாயிடும் கர்த்தரால் சரி கட்ட முடியாத ப்ராப்ளம் எல்லாம் சரியாக போயிடும் ஸ்பீக் அவுட் த வேர்ட் தட் கேன் பில்ட் தட் இஸ் த சைன் ஆஃப் அ பிரைட் அண்டர் த டங் ஆஃப் அ பிரைட் தட் வில் பி வேர்ட்ஸ் தட் கேன் பில்ட் வேர்ட்ஸ் தட் கேன் ஸ்ட்ரென்த் அண்ட் பீப்புள் நம்பர் டூ ஐ கேன் கோ அண்ட் ஆன் அண்ட் ஆன் மில்க் அண்ட் ஹனி போத் ஆர் மெடிசனல் both are used in medicine even such a certain bitter medicine is given with honey and honey has got a beautiful property those who are very slim and weak honey will make them strong and give them good structure those who are very fat honey has got a property to make them slim to make them slim use honey in one way lean person will grow stronger they won't become very fat but reasonably uh, fit those who are very fat take honey in a proper way they will reduce they'll be reduced so honey has got the property and to the best of my knowledge no other medicine has got this dual uh, propensity in it this medicine can make the weak strong and the fat slim milk is also good for anybody both have got medicinal values so our words must have this healing properties 
there may be problems between son in law and father in law or brothers a husband and wife mother in law daughter in law in the church we speak out words which cannot divide them but which could heal the hurts that is a sign of a bride your words must bring healing to the person who is suffering literally physical healing also when some people talk with us will get headache some people talk with us we will have neck pain pain in the neck andal konja neram pesnale thala vali vandru adu chellarude ekkiru poi chellarude pesna kaluthu vali karambichu adu chellarude ekkiru poi when you talk with some people depression will come ha huh? that's what your mother in law said eh? don't believe her i'm not trying to spoil you i'm not trying to bring a division between you and your mother in law only i want you to be careful my child adhe or pisasana be careful about your wife no no i don't want to bring problem in your family the word he says i don't want to bring problem in your family he wants to bring problem in your family that's all that's why the bible says poison of viper is under their tongue pambin visham avanga navin keelu irukkar visham but under the tongue of a bride honey and milk honey and milk even in the church the words of some people will build at this the words of some people will break at this see this is within parenthetic uh, within brackets a thousand times i have said when you talk with another believer don't personally interfere in their personal matters you know how to inquire you must know how to say hello to them don't ask embarrassing questions but with all these things these things don't get into some maramanda what can i do one day one little boy was sitting and eating chocolates then a small boy was sitting and eating chocolates one elderly gentleman came and told him hey are you eating chocolates chocolate is not good for health that's very bad don't eat chocolates that small boy said my grandpa lived for 132 years my grandpa lived for 132 years this man said oh, your grandpa lived for 132 years he ate chocolates okay grand or the period but so the chocolate chapada thing ona and the chinna pen solra enga tata 132 varsham veeroda irundar ah apdiya how nariya chocolate chapduvara that little boy said no no he doesn't he didn't eat chocolate but he was not interfering in others matters avar chocolate la saada matter na mattavanga matter la thale eda matter avar 132 varsham veeroda irundar it is good don't interfere in others matter even if you want to ask somebody ask somebody some questions which will not embarrass them it will not embarrass them when we can't set our own home in order when we cannot solve our own problems poking the nose into others problem is absolute nonsense that is not enquiring somebody we must have the knowledge how we could build them up till a few days back i was getting him he asked like this she asked like that i don't know why some people are very much interested in poking their nose into others matters when they can't set their own family in order we have to be very careful about it our words must have a healing touch in others lives 
our words must have a healing touch in others lives medicinal it must be able to heal their wounds so we read in proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 and 20 20 21 and 22 proverbs chapter 4 verses 20 21 and 20 to my son attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings my son attend to my words say so there is a problem i should tell simon simon my son attend to my words my son attend to my words listen to my words incline your ear unto my sayings let them not depart from your eyes keep always in remembrance what i tell you keep them always in remembrance keep them in the midst of thine heart in the central part of your heart let my words be there simon i'm giving you some advice i'm telling you something some life principle simon listen to my words then i say because they are life unto you so i should speak words which are life unto you i give counsel maybe i talk to i tell joe i say raja i say somebody listen to my words raja listen to my words joe my words will be life unto you and help to all your flesh all your body if you can speak such words speak such words or don't speak or don't speak i always think about job's friend job's friend they came to comfort him but with all the reasonings with all what they spoke they were they were rubbing salt in the wounds they were rubbing salt in the wounds the best thing job's friends did they were keep quiet for 7 days job ode friends job paaka vandanga avanga senja nalla karyangal ella அந்த காயங்களில் உப்பு தேய்ச்சி இன்னும் யோபை வேதனைப்படுத்தினா தானே ஒழிய யோபை நம்ம ரீசன் அவுட் பண்ணுறோம் ரீசன் அவுட் பண்ணுறோம் யோபை கொத்தி கொதறி கிழிச்சதானே ஒழிய அவர் ஒன்றுமே செய்யலை அவங்க செஞ்ச நல்ல காரியம் முதல் ஏழு நாள் அமைதியை பேசாமல் வாயை மூடிக்கிட்டு இருந்தாங்க இப்போ மெனி பீப்புள் த பெஸ்ட் திங் வாட் யூ கேன் டூ கீப் யூர் மவுத் ஷட் If you are a real friend of somebody, keep your mouth shut. Don't open your mouth. If you open your mouth, you must be able to say, My friend, listen to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Keep what I say before your eyes. Keep it in the central part of your heart. my words shall be a life unto you my words shall be a health to all your flesh if you can speak words like this you speak or my humble request keep quiet that is better because many a time remedy will become worse than the malady you will make situations worse with an intention you want to just to enquire you'll make that person run away from the church you put an embarrassing question that they may not come to the church or they may not mix in that group so if you can't speak words which can bring healing the best thing allah praise the lord praise the lord in english please bear with me those who got english as mother tongue there is a nonsensical greeting we call that a nonsensical greeting 
What do you mean by nonsensical greeting? Somebody say, how do you do? The answer is, how do you do? How do you? How do you? I, I stay in some places where there are some foreigners and hi-fi people and all. In those places that Bangalore, UTC and all, morning we just cross one another or we just go for di a breakfast together. Even when they, some unknown person, they say, hello, how are you? Before I could say how I am, he would go pass by. It's a nonsensical how are you? He says, how are you? But he doesn't wait to find out, how am I? When he says, how are you? I will also say, I'm fine, how are you? Before I could finish, how are you? He would have gone to some other place. So in English, that is called a nonsensical greeting. It doesn't make any sense. When I say, how do you do? I really don't want to know, how do you do? When I say, how are you really, I'm not waiting to get an answer how the other person is. It is just a nonsensical, it makes no sense. My dear brother, my dear sister. In a very sensible way, you can tell somebody, hello, peace be unto you. Unto you be peace. Grace be unto you. Grace be unto you. Just greet, grace be unto you. And they say, be unto you, grace. Pass by. More than that, there is nothing. If you want to stand and talk with somebody, after service, I'll ask, what's it you're talking? You must be able to say, sister, listen to my words. Let your ears incline to my words. Keep my words in front of your eyes. Let my words be in the midst of your heart. My words shall be for your life. My words will be a healing for all your flesh. That is the style of a bride. That is the style of a bride. In Psalm 107 verse 20. We know this verse very well. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their distraction. If you are a child of God, send your word and heal them. Is not use just listening to the story. No use in listening to the story. Your words, send your words and heal them. And deliver them, deliver that family, deliver that child, deliver that anger from distraction. There was a young girl in our church, very helpful in the ministry. We love, love that girl very much. Maybe because of her uh, underprivileged background, we had a very soft corner for her. There was some problem. Anevale, Janevale, everybody, everybody, everybody. All holy, holy people. Holy, holy people. Forgetting their past records. They started counseling that girl as if they are angels. All the angels counseled the, that girl, sent their words to her and destroyed her. Created a situation that she could not be in the church. That's all these holy people could do for that girl. When you send your word, it should bring healing. It should deliver them from destruction. You send your word and destroy people. What a pitiable situation it is. And who will give an account for her blood now? Who will give an account for her blood now? There are four. As if they are praying and giving prophecy, false prophecies. 
They thought that will, that will help in counseling. They sent their word. As I said, Anevale, Janevale, holy, holy people descended from heaven, forgetting their past. And as if that girl is the embodiment of evil, finally destroyed. Our heart aches. Personally, nobody loses anything. But how much we suffer to bring one person into Christ. Earlier that girl had given even a testimony. I was on the verge of committing suicide. After I came here, the Lord delivered me from the suicide tendency. Today I know that girl is suffering from the same suicide tendency. Who is the reason for that? All these counselors. Their remedy was worse than her sickness. If at all you send you a word, your word must be able to bring healing. He sent his word and healed people. And delivered them from destruction. Are you able to deliver people from their destruction? Think about a minute. Are we able to deliver people from their destruction? Or our words destroy them, destroy those families, destroy those family relationships. My dear brother, my dear sister, that's why when James chapter 5 verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. It is not your prayer. It is the prayer of faith. Not only faith, prayer of the faith. Your prayer must have words of faith. Your counseling must have words of faith. That must be faith. Yes, you slipped and fell. He's standing with a wide open arms. There was a fall in Abraham's life. It's not a license to fall. But certainly, it's an encouragement to come back. That is life. That is future. Come back. Have courage. We'll pray. Courage to say no to sin. Words that could deliver. Them. What a powerful state. Prayer of faith. Not your prayer. Prayer without faith is rubbish. Counseling without faith is rubbish. Counseling without Bible principles is rubbish. Nonsense. It makes no sense. Your prayer, your counseling, your words of faith can heal the sick. So it is under the tongue of a bride. Words of healing. What is coming out of a bride? Words that could strengthen somebody. Let the weak say, I am strong. Words that can bring healing. Okay. Now number three. Words which are tasty. If I ask you, you all will say the taste of honey, the taste of honey is very sweet. But do you know what is the real taste of honey? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what's the real taste of honey? Bitter. Very good. Who said that? Sister Sla. Taste of honey is a slightly mixer of bitter and sour. Kasapam pulipam lesa serdit. Adalor yini purk. But the sweetness is predominant. Many people may not notice the real taste of honey. That's why they say it's good for diabetes. Many people may not know the bitter and the sour and the pulipu in it. 
It has got slight pulipu, it has got slight bitter in it. So that honey makes that bitter and sour sweet. Bitter and sour sweet. My dear brother, my dear sister. Milk also very taste. So when we speak of the words, even when we correct them, you may be at times very harsh, you may be at times very blunt. We need strong medicine. We need strong medicine. Nevertheless, there should be a taste in it. And a very careful it need not be a sugar-coated pills. It can be a honey-mixed medicine. What do you mean by sugar-coated? Why it is harmful? Sugar is sweet and sugar is totally harmful. Some people's words are very sweet but it is totally harmful. Even if as a servant of God, I can tell you anyone, even today doctors advise, don't give the taste of the sugar even to your baby. Don't give the taste of a sugar even to the baby. The sugar is not good even for a baby. It's full of chemicals. If you all can avoid white sugar, it is really good. That sweetness is bad. Honey is also sweet. That sweetness is good. All sweetness is not bad. All sweetness is not bad. Sweetness in the sugar is bad. Sweetness itself is not bad. Some people speak sweet words, full of evil. Full of evil. ஷலோட்டிவீட்லி and they talk very sweetly and bring quarrel between husband and wife that is not the sweetness that is not the sweetness you must have sweet words like honey that must be bitter that must be healing property in it but that should be tasty so in tirukkural we read iniya ulamaga innadu Talk lovingly, talk affectionately. In Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. So wisdom and kindness must go together. Wisdom and kindness must go together. So it is not just kindness. It is not just wisdom. As a wise say, no, what you have done is wrong. You should not have done it. Don't participate in the communion. I am saying it is the right thing. Maybe a wise thing. So when I speak wise things, I must speak wise things with kindness. I always tell many people, especially when they bring up their children, as I rule I tell them, this is what I learned even through my psychology, I mean, 
my senior uh, educators be firm be kind when we were bringing up our children we applied this principle be firm be kind so with the volunteers and also with the staff working with us we are very kind we are very firm somebody says oh it's very tough to work under pastor is very tough to work under pastor is find out a better job even there were some senior believers here those who gave wrong counsel to somebody working here and they were the cause for those people to leave they left the job here they said you cannot come up in life if you work here they spoke 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 and they made those boys leave the place here today they are lying down as drunkards now they don't go and talk to him when they are working here they will talk to him you find out a better job do this do that when they leave the place when that person has become a drunkard they don't go and talk to him now their mission is over their mission is over they separated the boy from here their mission is over now the boy has become drunk and the whole family is suffering they don't care no two pence for that person i'm just saying what's happening i'm just saying what's happening i am very firm when somebody comes one minute late i say it's late late by one minute is not excusable late is late don't have a complacency that you are not 10 minutes late you are only one minute late and don't be late by that one minute i am firm but at the same time i am loving them i am kind with them i laugh with them i play with them i spend time with them i care for their needs is not to speak about myself it is not wisdom it is not kindness the real taste is the mixer of wisdom and kindness it's not many people love the taste of the sugar but the taste of the sugar the sweetness in sugar is all together harmful to our life don't be that sweet don't be that sweet not asking somebody oh chalon epdi iruka oh ivu epdi iruka apdi iruka அந்த உருகிறது ஒரு பிரயோஜனம் கிடையாது நாட் தட் ஸ்வீட்னஸ் பட் இட் ஷுட் ஹேவ் எ ஹீலிங் ஸ்வீட்னஸ் இன் இட் இட் ஷுட் பி ஸ்வீட் இட் ஷுட் பி கைண்ட் பட் விஸ்டம் விஸ்டம் அண்ட் கைண்ட்னஸ் மஸ்ட் கோ டு ஈவன் வென் யூ பிரிங் அப் யுவர் சில்ட்ரன் டேக் திஸ் பவர்ஃபுல் லா பி ஃபார் பி கைண்ட் be firm be kind when our children were very small they asked for a toy we say no the child cries and cries and cries and faints my no stands no because the child cries i am not going to give the toy if i want to give the toy must have given it first not because the child cries even cries and cries and cries the child faints that no stands no with the love and affection we try to explain why no to that why we don't want to give we try to explain but that no stands no the child learns a lesson when they say no it is no otherwise if you give the toy to the child when the child cries the child learns a beautiful lesson if i cry my mother will give if i cry my father will shout at my mother and say see the child is crying give so the child learns a beautiful lesson i can uh, i can get anything by crying who taught that lesson you if you want to give give before the child cries if you say no stand on that no till the end but be kind don't be harsh don't beat
We don't be, we never beat our children. If I remember and right, only three times I have chastised Christy. In all his life, only three times, when he was very young. I don't remember even of a harsh word I spoke against them. But my no is no, my yes is yes. With the grace of God. So I love all parents. And also very much grandparents. By thinking that you are showing pity to your child, you are spoiling the child. You are teaching a wrong lesson. You are teaching a wrong lesson. So your words must be tasty, but that's not a sugar taste, that should be a honey taste or milk taste. That should be a honey taste or a milk taste. My dear brother, my dear sister, in Proverbs chapter 24, verses 13 and 14. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, My son, take honey. It's good. Honey from the honeycomb, it is good. Likewise, knowing wisdom, is good for your soul. And if you receive that, it will help you. If the child can understand that teaching, that taste, that taste of discipline, that taste, sweetness mixed with bitterness, that will help the child. Sugar will not help the child. Honey taste will help the child. Discipline is something a child will love. Without discipline we cannot do anything. There is no, there is nothing called absolute freedom. Can you imagine anything called absolute freedom? There is nothing called absolute freedom in this world. Now brother Yivaraj, he is playing well on the keyboard. But it, it may have five and a half octaves. How many octaves, brother? Five and a half, this keyboard? It may have five and a half octaves or maximum eight octaves, big piano. Or some keyboard will have only three octaves. Maybe a pitch board will have only one octave. Only within that, you have got the freedom to play. Your guitar may have six strings, you've got freedom only within those six strings. You can't cry, I need seven string, eight string. Play within those six strings. As we grow maturity, you'll enjoy freedom. But that freedom is always within a framework. There is nothing called absolute freedom. I was running a magazine called Bubble, a wall magazine. In that wall magazine I wrote one statement, it may be useful to you. When a child learns to write, it requires a four ruled notebook, four rules. When the child grows confidence, it requires a double ruled notebook. A double ruled notebook, two lines. The sign of confidence, the child uses a single rule notebook. A single no rule notebook, only one rule. Four rules, two rules, one rule. The style of writing is writing in between the lines. For a very long time, I write in between the lines. The style of writing is in between the lines. But the total confidence and writing is an unruled notebook, no rule. No rule. Four rules, two rules, one rule, no rule. But I ended that statement, yet somebody cannot write outside the page. Somebody cannot write outside the page. There is an unseen rule. Four s 
square rectangle within that sheet alone you can write the freedom is always within the boundaries no four rules no two rules no one rule in between the rules nevertheless you cannot write outside the paper you cannot play outside your family you cannot play outside your husband wife relationship you cannot play outside your parents children relationship you can't play outside the rule of this country you cannot play outside the rule of the church you cannot play outside the rule of your institution your workplace you cannot go out of the rule if you go out of the rule you'll be thrown out of that square that's a simple principle that's honey is not sugar honey will have a bitter taste in it but in the end it will help you in the end it will help you i can go on and on and on and finally i say i have two things i got more to say it is suitable for all when you talk something you must know how you should talk to the elderly people you must know how you should talk to your wife how you should talk to your children how you talk to another woman how you talk to a pastor how you talk to the believers in the church your words must be suitable to all to a sick person to a rich person to a poor person to a weak person you may come from a different background i sometimes i always tell others see see his background the level he has come is really great against his background his background is this for his background he has come up to this level so you must be able to understand that background his social background his economic background his religious background the value system he was holding so far so when you talk to somebody when you counsel somebody it should be suitable for all you must be able to counsel a child you must be able to uh, many of you it's not necessary that we must have gone through that path in a joke like way i say i i find it difficult to counsel two type of people because i didn't go through that path i may not be able to counsel people those who are suffering without job because i never lived without a job for a single day not so for my son not so for my daughter the day they finished their education they got their job they went into their job so probably i don't know what is the mindset of somebody who is without job and the time that i before i my examination i got my appointment till this morning i am minister i mean i am in one or the other job not one day without job so probably i may not be able to understand but any i can counsel them i can give them the word of god similarly i don't know there is a love failure heart broken even my college days in a jocular way i tell my friends it's not that you should marry somebody you love it's better you marry somebody who loves you so i never loved anybody i love only after marriage and our love grows our love grows stronger and stronger it's a when you counsel somebody it should be suitable for everybody i can mix with rich i was not to speak about myself with rich with poor with educated not educated those are coming from slum background those are coming from aristocratic background your words must be suitable for your all milk is suitable for those who are in the slum those who are in a light place those who are educated not educated honey and milk must be under your tongue and finally to save time i go quickly i said one thing it is processed food i want to say a lot of things about vegetarian and non vegetarian time doesn't permit me god will now explain that sometime later but both honey and milk they are not pure vegetarian what is honey don't get uh don't be nostalgic honey is nothing but the warm meat of the honey bee honey is nothing but the warm meat of the honey bee what you get in the flower is not honey that is called a nectar sometimes children they suck that and eat 
Too much of nectar is very bad for health. Nectar is not at all good. Honey takes that nectar, it is processed within its bowel system and the evil in the nectar by nature taken by honey bee and the honey is vomited by every bee. The honey is nothing but a processed food. Honey is the processed food. That is why it is more suitable for us. Similarly, milk is not vegetarian. Milk is pure non-vegetarian. Say for example, cow. Cow eats grass. It eats grass. The grass is processed within its system. It gets into its blood system. That grass becomes the blood of the uh, cow. The blood of the cow, because of the property, the lacto property in the grass, segregates good more milk the calcium, magnesium in the grass in the form of milk it comes to us. If at all somebody takes milk he takes the blood of that cow. Those are eating against cow they can think about it Probably it's better they can also stop using milk. So we can get more milk. When they eating cow, some people may be against it. But when you drink milk, you are drinking the milk of the tiger, the blood of the animal. And no cow is giving milk for our sake. It is for the sake of its calf. It's for the sake of that calf. If there is no calf, there will be no milk. So milk is also a processed food. Honey is also a processed food. Just a word. When you take non-vegetarian, you take processed protein. You take processed protein. The cow or the lamb, it eats grass. And the gr protein in that grass is processed and you take the processed protein. Nobody will eat a carnivorous. People may eat a lamb or a deer, but no one will eat a tiger that eats a deer, deer. No one will eat a lion that eats a lamb. Because they eat already processed food. The vegetable is the food. The vegetable is the food. In a factory, it is get processed. So when you take non-vegetarian, you are taking the processed food. Man can eat vegetarian, man can eat non-vegetarian, that's why he is created. But basically food is vegetarian. When you eat non-vegetarian, you eat the processed food. When, especially when you take honey, when you take milk, you take the processed food. So what do we mean by spiritually processed food? When you speak out something, when you tell something, you tell him from your experience, from a Bible verse here, from a Bible verse there, from this cross, from that cross, from this field, that field, from Genesis, from Revelation, from morning service, from evening service. We take nectar, we take the word, we apply it in our life. We apply it in our life and we spew out honey. We give our blood as milk. 
So when you speak out words, that should be a processed food. That must have been applied to your life. That milk must be your blood. That honey is something that you sucked from a flower. That you take it, you are taking it in. And you are giving that out. So the word of God must be applied for you, for your family, for your lifestyle. At one point of time you must be able to say, how that was useful to you. My dear brother, my dear sister, to save time I conclude with this. So there are honey, milk and honey under the tongue of the bride. So under your tongue, the words must be able to bring strength to others. Those who are falling must be able to rise up. Those who are weak must be strong. Those who are broken must be built up. And your words must be medicinal. Your words must bring healing that should deliver people from destruction. You must be able to say, my son, my daughter, keep my words. It is a medicine for all your flesh. It is a medicine for all your problems. If you can't speak like that, I tell you, don't speak. The words must be a medicine to others. Your words must be suitable for all age, all people. It must be tasty, not the taste of a sugar that's evil. It must be the taste of honey and milk. And number five, it should be processed within you first. You gather this nectar from flower to flower, from flower to flower, morning and evening. Read the Bible. Apply it in your life. Then serve it in your ministry. Milk, the grass that you eat, that should become your blood and that should become your milk. My dear brother, my dear sister, it should be processed within you. So under your time, that should be milk and honey, word that could bring strength to somebody, healing to somebody, suitable for all. It is processed within you and taste of milk and honey, not sugar-coated chalami. Not with hypocrisy, not with pretension. Not, with, un, not unfeigned. Not feigned, I'm sorry. It should be unfeigned. The Spirit of the Lord. No hypocrisy, no maimala. Commit your tongue into the hands of the Lord. Especially Lord. Let my tongue bring strength to somebody who is weak. Healing to somebody who is sick. Taste of honey. Not a sugar-coated taste of Give me the grace that my words should be suitable to all people, all ages, all backgrounds. And let that be processed first within me. Shall we just stand to our feet? Commit our tongues into the hands of the Lord and pray. It's a very earnest, even I love the young boys, young girls. Pray. Let your words be strength to somebody. Let your words make your friends, weak friends, strong. They are depressed, oppressed, suppressed, broken. Let your words bring a healing touch to them. Young girls pray, young boys pray. Young elderly gentlemen, for the glory of the Lord, I tell you. When elderly gentlemen, Walking in the high places of the earth. Eighty-five years old. He went to meet his student who studied under him in fifth standard. Maybe some sixty years back. I must talk to you. And the person is very sandosha mark. One day I was the person is sandosha mark. And the young, the young, the young, the soldier. 
அறுபது ஆண்டுகளுக்கு முன்பாக தன்னிடத்தில் படித்த ஒரு பையனை பார்த்து அந்த பையனோடு பேசுகிறது ரொம்ப சந்தோஷமாக இருக்குது கேன் சம்படி சேல் லைக் தேட் யுவர் டீச்சர் யுவர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் யுவர் கிளாஸ்மேட் டூ தே ஃபைண்ட் ஜாய் டாக்கிங் டு யூ Do they find joy talking to him, telling you something really happened? A teacher met his student 60 years back and said, You can't give the joy to somebody. Why can't we give the joy to somebody? Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Let our tongue be the tongue of the bride. 